Yamen on my own. Oh, way, oh, way, oh, oh, way, oh, way, oh, oh, Yamen on my own. Repeat after me like this. Yamana. Yamana. Together like this. Oh. Oh. Yamana. Yamana. Yeah. 
like a lion, rage like a thunder. Your desire, oh, wings that we fly on. When we unify our hearts and our soul, we rectify this moment and we lose all control. Yeah. Great Spirit, Gaia Creator, Earth Mother, a spirit surrender. Thunder breaks as our inner world shakes. When we listen to the still small voice sing, I am, I am, you are you. When we listen to the still small voice, I am my am you are you when we listen to the still small voice I am my am you are you when we listen to the still small voice I am my am you are you when we listen to the still small voice trust the universe of silence in the forest listen to the mystical chorus thunder breaks open up your heart it's been like a bubble and food don't do your part in trust the Universe of silence in the forest Listen to the mystical chorus Thunder breaks, open up your heart It's been like a bubble and photo Do your power say I am, I am, you are you When we listen to the still small voice I am, I am, you are you When we listen to the still small voice I am, I am, you are you When we listen to the still small voice I am, I am, you are you In seven directions, reflecting of love, life, I'm feeling these blessings. Mother Moon, she makes us feel so good. Now, cool down, silence, just stop. Yeah, we keep on listening to the still small voice. Silence, just stop. Yeah, we keep on listening to the still small voice. Silence, silence, just stop. Yeah, we keep on listening to the still small voice. Silence, silence. And we keep on Let's go! Give me a heart 
to feel you. Give me a heart to feel you. Give me a heart to feel you. Give me a heart to feel you. Yeah. Give me a heart to feel you. 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 Yeah. Give me a heart to feel you. Please teach me how to stride with my hair up when I'm all alone. Restless in this hotel room. Send me my guardians, I need proof. Please free me. My patterns and stories they hold me back. Yes, Jaja, I need you. Give me a heart to feel you. Give me a heart to feel you. Give me a heart to feel you. song right now for y'all. It's a song I wrote, I uh, kind of got into a, it was a political conversation with a friend who's also a touring musician. I'm not going to say who, but somebody else in the circuit. And he was really sure. He was like, Mikey, it's this way. And I said, maybe. You know, like, what do we really know? Could be. So, and it wasn't to gaslight his experience or it was just a question, you know, like, this is your perspective, and then there's other perspectives. Uh, something that I, I love about this world is there are many perspectives. Um, so I ended up writing this song. And then I spoke to my, uh, my, my coach, Shiva, who I've been with, you're going to see him, he's on the show. And I said to him, you know, this is what happened, I wrote this song, and I sang it for him. And he wrote me, he spoke me back, he's like, that's Ram Dass. That's his teaching. And I'm like... I don't even know what you're talking about. I don't really, I don't really know Ram Dass very well. But he said, man, he said, he believes, he said that this song came through me and it's Ram Dass's teaching and, and I ended up learning a bit about it as well. That we're all, we're walking each other home. Um, so I ended up, uh, recording this song and this is, uh, the song's gonna be included on the, uh, on a compilation for, the, for, uh, Soul Land Music Productions. We recorded this song live in the studio, and uh, that's what you'll be hearing. So I hope you like it. 
And uh, yeah, thank you, Ram Dass, uh, for bringing this concept into our lives um, and for choosing people to sing your songs. Um, I'm still learning about how that all works in real time. So big love to you, and Maharaji, and all those that, uh, specifically Maharaji, how you speak through different individuals and help bring out these uh, these gems. And uh, it's a miracle, it really is.
watching this video. Uh, it's great to be here with you all. We're going to sing a couple more songs. One is called Rise. Uh, and I wrote this about uh, the, the fact that I grew up with depression. And um, having these emotions within myself, I've learned that uh, my music, they are actually life vests that I throw out uh, into the ocean, the abyss, the abyss of the ocean of this life. And these songs that I write, um, they saved my life. You know, I was listening to Krishna Das speak, and he was saying that uh, Kirtan, the, the fact that he chants, is him saving his own life. And I feel like that's what my songs are. And this song, for me, I didn't even really understand what it was about until after I wrote it. It came through. And, um, you know, through the resilience of, of vulnerability of sharing from our hearts, we have the ability of, uh, as a community around the world, rising up together, when we share the vulnerable aspects of our heart, this is healing that is occurring in real time through the act of opening our heart in dialogue and, uh, and, and sharing our personal vulnerabilities and our secrets. And I really think within that comes the healing of not just this generation, but really all generations who have ever existed and to come in the future generations. So um, I hope you enjoy this song and I hope you'll sing along and watch the music video. You can check it out on Facebook and Instagram. Rise. Yeah. 
Let's just take a moment and breathe together for just another moment, be more together and take in the resonance of that heart, heart, soul space, reverberation, an offering from Mikey Pauker. And uh, we're very, very, whew, very grateful to have arrived in this moment and we have more music coming up with the set from Gone Gone Beyond and an interview with them. And we have giveaways, but right now we're giving away this moment <laughs> in dialogue with Mikey Pauker. Please welcome to Soul Land. Welcome, Mikey. Thanks, Shiva. Good wow. to be here with yeah. you. Uh, you know, it's like you and I together is it's so easy because we do this like a few times a week, it seems, right? We get to talk a lot, right? We could do this all day, but but this is a wonderful opportunity to have a, 
an open dialogue for this little parentheses that we're here for. We're going to go real deep in, in a real short amount of time here about your connection with Ram Dass and, and the, the other artists who are elders in the musical wisdom uh, um, and sharing that you, you've, you've developed very beautiful friendships with Benji Wertheimer and, and his wife, Heather Wertheimer, who have a group, Shantala, and you, you toured with them, went very deep with them. And uh, for, for a while, you'd been, uh, you know, nearly neighbors with Jai Tal up in Northern California and got to develop a relationship with him. And, and you've, you've been connecting with Krishna Das and, Aubrey Marcus had you out to Austin for the for the podcast, and you got to perform on that as well. So uh, it's so beautiful to come full circle with uh, with Raghu, who I know you've been talking now, and and then you paid it forward by introducing us to Gone Gone Beyond, and uh, and then the song that you talked about that came through. I, I want to really open there with this song, Walking Home, which will eventually come out. Right now, it's uh, it's unreleased, but it's beautifully inspired by Ramdas in a very fascinating way. You, you talked about it. I hope people could hear that uh, that message. Anything you want to say more about the song before we move forward? Yeah, sure. You know that song. It came to me at a time when um, pretty sure it was pre-pandemic. I was still living in San Rafael, and I was a uh, the time living it with 20 people in an intergenerational hippie community. And um, when I say hippie, I mean, it's like, you know, yuppie. It's not like real hippies, but spiritual, deep spiritual people. And I was sitting there, you know, like, as I mentioned during the set that, you know, these songs, they come um, as gifts. And when I was writing, I, I did have a, a conversation with a friend of mine who's a musician in the, in the touring circuit. And, it became a pretty heated conversation. As you know, you know, this was before the blow up of, of 2020, but this was, this is the, I guess you would say the beginning of that collective, I guess we call it a purge. And, um, it's just a conversation about absolution. Uh, you know, when we get into these deep conversations, sometimes we forget that there's other perspectives. Right. And so, um, it came to me in that, in that moment, I was sitting down to play that regardless of what perspective we have, um, we're all literally walking each other home. You know, we're going to be on the path, on the Dharmic path as neighbors. I mean, and at least that's my goal, you know, especially being a Jewish musician in this day and age with so much around, you know, different views on Israel and Palestine and all these different topics that are so hot topics. And to know that, like, we can have different perspectives, but it doesn't mean the love isn't there. It doesn't mean that I don't still honor and love and respect you. Maybe we have different views. And I think we're in a different, we're a very kind of like in a dangerous time in society where we're losing that, the idea that diversity of opinion and diversity of belief, it's so important to the fabric of being a human being and to have the tolerance and the understanding and the compassion, even though we might disagree. So what I, what I really love so much about who you are as an artist and, and how you move through the world, sharing your music and your performance of these songs, you really take so much into consideration. And, and I would say you, you're really on the front lines fighting for diversity and inclusion. That's a really powerful message that I feel you carry and, and you speak on it, but you're also, you're being about it. And, and I'm just reminded of that now and what you're sharing about there. And, and, you know, of course you get into some challenging situations that you've confided in me about just, you know, being, after all, you have a human heart like the rest of us. And sometimes it's, there's moments where it's just too much and, and there's such a fine line between being an artist and being sensitive and, and then finding the courage to share that in this very specific and unique time in the modern age. 
I want to move forward to discuss Rise, which is a song that really deserves to be seen in music video. Uh, sometimes you could just hear a song and that's enough. But but you created, you and your, you know, your team and the, the director of the video and all who collaborated to make that video reality. It really deserves, in my opinion, to be to be see, experienced uh, with that context of seeing the video while hearing the song because the imagery is so moving. And I, I don't know anybody who's watched it who either isn't, you know, the tears aren't flowing, the weeping isn't already occurring, or they're holding it back because it pierces the veil of such a sensitive area, these walls that all of us put up and guard. And, and the song and the video really gets to the heart of the matter, shall we say. And I, I'd love you in that spirit to just share any thoughts you have about what your intention of the song is and, and your experience with the video and what you hope people will receive from the experience. Wow. Well, th thanks for, thanks for bringing that up, Shiva. You know, that, that song, you know, for both of us is, a, is an intimate thing because I remember. So if you don't know everybody, Shiva isn't just the host here, right? Shiva has been my coach for, I don't know, I mean, it's been six years. Uh, songwriting development, A and R. I mean, he's very humble. He's a very humble guy. This guy. But um, in one of our sessions, I remember vividly opening up. You know, I take a lot of notes. Shiva, I don't know if Shiva, you, you have this experience, but I, I would call you a channel. You know, when we get into our conversations, like it's like you know, it's like with Ramdas, you would start speaking, and like these messages would come through. And so in one of Shiva's Dharma talks with me, he was saying, Mikey, you know, like this world, it's a, people are suffering, people are suffering, you can't let people lock them out of their heart, you know, you, you can't let this world, excuse me, lock people out of their heart. And it actually came through you originally. The, the, the cruelty of the world, the horror of the world, and now, of course, in 2022, with, you know, the war in we Ukraine. Had no idea. We had no idea. I mean, this we wrote the song in 2017, we were having this conversation. And like to think like, I mean, of course, like, yes, our human experience, we, there was still suffering and there's trauma and everyone has their story, but we had no idea what was going to happen in 2020. We had I mean, no clue. Psychic, <laughs> you know, which some people did. And, you know, you know, I, I'm more of a realist. I didn't, I didn't think that anything like that would happen. And, and that conversation in that session, you, you brought this through and then something happened. It was like, you know, I, I think of music as, um, mediumship you know songwriters were, were catching songs and this message you chose to come through you and something in that session created this alchemy between both of us and our souls and then we were able to write the song and you know when i listen to that song years later even after the music video that we shot by the way which i still i watch it once in a while i'm still moved we had no idea how how it would resonate now in this day and age with the war happening in Ukraine, um, with Russia and Ukraine and just really all, everything that we as a human experience had to go through in this portal. Um, and, and still, you know, the world's not the same and I don't know if it ever will be. So, and in um, the video, you didn't, you said this when you, uh, uh, the video, you released it. It's on YouTube now, but at first I, my memory is that you made it available on Facebook. And it really took off. I think it got over a million views on, on Facebook. Yeah. And and you even, I think, launched it by saying, really confessing, I didn't even want to go to my music, my own music video shoot. No, I didn't want to go. I mean, that's exactly correct. I mean, we shot the video. Um, I actually remember it, believe it or not. Um, uh, we did the we did the video. Believe it or not, the was I think a thousand dollars whole production budget. Which, if you know, like music production, that's like that's like nothing really to forward two directors of photography. It was a miracle how it came together. People like I, I, I put out this idea. I found an organization called the, called the vulnerable rally. My buddy, Gabriel diamond, we got together. Um, we went to the streets of Oakland. We held up signs and on the signs, you write something that it's called the vulnerable rally. So something vulnerable that you'd like to share that you've never shared with someone else. So you're going to, you're going to, the premise is you, you go yeah. to a, a city a place, you know, in the public, 
right? In, in Oakland. In downtown yeah. Oakland or somewhere in, in public and you write something on a, uh, on, on a cardboard that is the thing that you're most afraid of that to share that some if somebody knew this about you this would be the worst thing for you to have somebody else know this about you something of that premise that's right so it's riveting information exactly like the most riveting you know somebody in the video said it was riveting they said i saw somebody hit my i saw this my a sperm donor hit my mother like something like that like and this one person lost their mother like i miss my mother you know, a grown man saying he misses his mother. You know, you don't see these kinds of things in, in typical media. Um, you know, an individual, there, there was a moment in the video where you had an, an older woman, let's get an elder saying that I'm, you know, I'm afraid that I'm never going to figure out what to do with my life. And then you see a young, you see a young black man in Oakland who's in his mid-20s holding up the same sign. They had no idea they wrote it. So what that shows is that as human beings, we all have these narratives, right? That, um... And when we can share them with each other, we realize that, you know, this is a human thing, human being thing. And that's also why I love the teachings of Ram Dass. Because the more that what I learned, maybe I'm completely off my rocker, but the more that I listen to him, by the by the way, Raghu Marcus's podcast, the more that I listen to it, which I love, thank you so much, Raghu, for this beautiful gift to the world, the more spiritually evolved we become, the more human we become. And we realize that being a human being and having these emotions and seeing these 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 uh, these narratives show up, sometimes maybe limiting narratives, victimhood, that's a human being thing. And then we can just like accept it and love it and then let it go. And Ramdas talks about that so much throughout his teachings over the years. And Dharma yeah. talks about the things that we cling so tight to and the walls that we put up and that if anybody knew it it would be the end of us, we, we feel. And then there's this moment where it's really revealed throughout the video that we are so much more connected than we are separate. And and it was such a power, and it is such a powerful teaching to just courageously, you know, have this container of reveal. And, and I just, you know, feel more human every time I watch it. And it's it must, so what's it like taking heavy topics, shall we say, or powerful experiences and leading groups of people through that moment, that ceremony in a live context as you, you know, go about on tour and your, your, your performances are more like experiences, ceremonies, awakenings, you know, through you're, you're a singer songwriter, a troubadour with acoustic guitar. And, and yet, you know, people by the end of, of your sets, they're opening up in, in ways that they've, perhaps weren't even prepared to at the beginning of the set. I mean, to be honest, it's the biggest miracle in the world. Because every night, every single night, no matter if it's 15,000 people or five, you know, it's the same energy. It's beautiful. It's like, it's the biggest gift to get to do this every night, night after night, you know, when, when we're on the road. Right now I'm home, I'm grateful, get to get to sleep. 10 hours a night, I'm, I'm stoked. But when we're out there, you know, the road's so grueling. And a lot of the time as a musician, people think, oh, it must be this big party, but we're really loading in and loading out and driving all day. When we get up on that stage for an hour, we get to witness grace. Something happens, portal opens up, you know, it's like, I'm guessing a lot of people you're watching this right now, you've had those moments, right? In your life where maybe you're not a performer, maybe you're, maybe you're a farmer, maybe you do permaculture, but there's something about the alchemy of the way that you work the earth. And there's a moment where you feel like there's something bigger and then you realize, oh my, you know, I think it, a lot of it happens is I get to see people, I get to see people and their true gifts. And there's just something special that happens and every night to be, I, I don't think I, I don't get to take it for granted because when it's so riveting, when it's so beautiful, it's like, it's, you can't ignore it. And I'm so grateful every day. And I don't think, you know, I'll ever have the words to share really the, the experience of getting to do this for a living and get to travel and connect with souls. These are souls having a spiritual, having a human experience night after night. It's, it's the, it's the most beautiful thing in the world. 
how has we're going to talk about another song that you uh that's getting a lot of traction right now on spotify and it was written during the pandemic and and so i consider it a, a healing mantra and affirmation that song's called we are safe but before we get into that i wanted to ask you in this beautiful container we have at soul land music series and and the inspiration ramdas and those those waves of loving awareness how how has mantra music affected you you grew up deeply rooted in the jewish heritage and faith and deeply connected to that music and that spiritual tradition and then as you moved through your journey as as a recording and performing artist you you were constantly coming into contact with mantra music and 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 Jews who went and found, you know, Dharma in the East. And, and again, you, you have friendship, real friendship with uh, Benji and Heather Wertheimer and Jayital and Krishna Das and, and, and others here, you know, that, you know, and then eventually you really, there was no way you were going to miss the teachings of Ram Das, you know, through that point. But, but it really, my understanding is you met the, the mantra first through these, you know, channels and, uh, I don't know anything, you know, before we move on to where you're no. I share about how mantra music has informed and inspired you and affected what you're doing now. Well, just sure. A quick story. I'll try to bring up a short story. Um, a little over 15 years ago, I was managing, I was tour managing different bands. I was living in a, you know, sleeping in a 18 or 10 person white van traveling across the United States, sleeping in the van with like five guys you know, in a rock band. And I didn't know what to do with myself. My mom said, why don't you go work at a Jewish summer camp and, you know, be the, you call it a song leader, like a worship leader. And so I ended up going to this camp, went there, had this enlightened moment. And um, after that summer, you know, realized I was like, this is what I want to do. There's something that happened. It was like a lightning moment. A lightning bolt went through my body and I saw my entire life uh, flash before my eyes. And it was a little bit after that where another summer was like a, a year later, I met a rabbi. Her name is Rabbi Sarah Brandis. She's located in Israel now. And she was into yoga. And I was getting into yoga and meditation at the time. And I said to her, you know, like, you know, what kind of music do you think I should listen to? What's some cool stuff? And she goes, have you ever heard of Kirtan? And I said, what's that? And so she ends up, she puts on a record uh, uh, by Krishna Das and I'm listening to it. And I'm like, and I was just struck. I was just like, what is this? His voice, like what is going on? And so, um, you know, listening to Krishna Das, I said to her, is there, are there, is this, this has happened in Judaism? You know, do we have this in our lineage? And she was like, yeah, well, you know, that's what Nigunim are, these, these chants, you know, they, even though it's not call and response, we chant these certain pattern of notes and we, 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 we hold a, a kavana, which is an, an intention. And we, and we, you know, we can, we can elevate, we can lift, we can connect with God that way. And I was like, okay, well, what about like actual Kirtan? And she said, oh, there's another guy's name is the Kirtan Rabbi, Rabbi Andrew Hahn, you should check him out. And then I said, okay, well, how can I connect deeper with it? She said, well, why don't you go to Jerusalem and go study at Yeshiva Simchat Shlomo? And that was like, if, if, if she, Yeshiva is like a seminary for Jews. And I lived in Jerusalem and I studied at the Shlomo Karlbach Yeshiva and that's kind of like my thing, but I, my relationship with chant all came from Krishna Das. And if it wasn't for hearing his music, I wouldn't be writing probably spiritual Jewish music. And it came from me listening to Krishna Das. And so years later, when I saw you, I, that's how I met you. My relationship with chant brought me to you too. I went to my friends like, hey, let's go to Yogi Bhakti, Sh Bhakti Shala on a New Year's and let's go there and chant for 12 hours. and. You know, being a Jewish guy, you know, I was like, don't tell my rabbi. You Go, know? Govindas, also Go, Jewish uh, man who went to uh, <laughs> India to find uh, the Dharma through and was brought <laughs> to Ramadan. <laughs> the connections are so amazing. And Bhakti Yoga Shala in Santa Monica is, uh, and, and is lives online now, um, just a powerful outlet for uh, helping people uh, learn with, with, you know, uh, integrity and, and 
and care for for the practice these these mantras and and yet yet there's a powerful connection with the the Jewish tradition. It's my gate. It was literally my gateway to my own spiritual search through Krishna Das, like, uh, and then to, you know the full circle to to get to, you know, I send him books. He sends me books. He sent me a book called the Baal Shem Tov. It's a book about the the first one of the they call him the levitating rabbi who would meditate. He would sing the songs of the birds, hear the song of the birds, hear the song of the waters, sing the song of the waters. This rabbi, there's a rabbi like that. If you didn't know, his name is. Uh, Rabbi Yisrael Baal Shem Tov, and he, he told me to get that book. And I sent him a book called the, um, by Gershom Winkler, The Magic of the Ordinary, which talks about the indigenous and shamanic roots of Judaism, which I recommend all those books. But what I want to say, that I know I'm talking a lot, chant, kirtan in itself changed my life when I first went to Yogi Bhakti Shala, Yoga Bhakti Shala, when I first heard Krishna Das, when I first heard Jayatal, when I first heard Benji and Heather with Shantala, I have been so moved by the, the, the technology of what comes through these artists and what comes through anyone who sits down at harmonium or sits down with their guitar or sits down with their bradunga and starts playing. There's something that happens and it just resonates and it's so deep and so powerful and so moving. And um, I just got to say, if it wasn't for chant, and for going to Kirtan and seeing you at Yogi Bhakti Shala, this never would have happened. So I'm still figuring out as we go, but I love going to Kirtan, uh, Kirtans. I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan. So speaking of it, if you know anything going on, please invite me. I'd like to come. <laughs> it's beautiful, man. It's so beautiful. And I know Govindas is, uh, and, and Radha, Bhakti Yoga Shala, they, they're big fans of yours. And so I, I know they'll be touched to, to see this. Uh, we, we got a couple more minutes here or, or less before we got to uh, bring on, we get to bring on Gang Gang Beyond, that we're all so excited about. And uh, But before we do, I just wanted to, anyone who doesn't know yet that Mikey has a beautiful Instagram account and live performances and all kinds of powerful sharing in, in his stories. So it's on Instagram at Mikey Pauker. And also he's going to be in Grass Valley live at the High Vibe Fest a week from this Sunday, and you can get your uh, tickets online there, uh, highvibrecords.ticketspice.com slash highvibefest in Grass Valley a week from Sunday. Before we conclude our portion of the dialogue today, I do want to ask you about a song called We Are Safe, which is now getting more and more each day, more traction on uh, on Spotify, being shared through Spotify and played and received. And it was a song written in the, the, the deep early stages of the pandemic when the fear was at a deafening volume. And I feel like the song is uh, a healing affirmation and mantra, something one can do to uh, quickly, simply, melodically uh, realign with courage and, and our heart. And I think it's a gift to the planet right now. I, I really do. And, and it's never been more needed than uh, now. Anything you want to share about the song before we, uh, you know, conclude this portion of the, the moment? Yeah, I mean, you know, as well, that song, you were in the dojo with me when we were writing it together. So you know, give, give yourself credit. Shiva helped write the song as well. And I mean, what I love about that song is, um, you know, it's just really like a personal narrative about the real fear and anxiety that I was feeling during the pandemic that, you know, we, the whole world had to stop and as being a touring musician, like the whole industry on, on halt and so many industries. And it was just, um, you know, like, it was like almost like a lullaby, like it, like it, or like if you could wear an, if you could sing an amulet, that's kind of like what the song was, uh, an amulet and vibration and a mantra, speaking of mantra, um, reminding us that we're safe. We are safe even in, uh, you know, times of forest fires in California and riots all around the United States. And, you know, what happened with the, 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 the horrible tragedies that happen against people of color in our country. Um, the, the, the historic rise of anti-Semitism around the world, so much hate, or, uh, against so many different kinds of people. Um, and it's not to negate those things, right? 
not to say, no, this isn't happening. It's not to gaslight experience, but even in the times of challenge, we've given technologies like prayer, we're given technologies like chant and song, words of affirmation that can transform our reality, give us a new narrative that can send healing. And that was my intention was to help create a song that could be a lullaby, could be some like a shield or armor in the times that we're in. Um, and I, and I, I feel for all those right now who are going through it. I know me personally, the past few years were some of the hardest years of my life. And um, I got it. I want to thank those years for the music because it, if it wasn't for the challenges, we wouldn't, as artists, we wouldn't have something to sing about. So may we continue to face and what, you know, what, what's coming to us. May we, may we continue to dance, dance with what comes. Um, as I'm pretty sure Ram Dass spoke about that. And we, may we continue to be hu more human um, and be the loving awareness. Um, may we just continue to be that and, and uh, as we move forward. And, and, and I would recommend, if you haven't heard the song, it's on Spotify. Uh, you just look up Mikey Palker and you can hear the song. And I hope it's helpful for you as it is, has been for me as well. Um, and so I just want to say thanks for having me here. Thanks to everyone at the foundation, Raghu, Shiva, Mangala, everyone, Soul Land Records, and, and, uh, and Gone Gone Beyond for being a part of this. Ram Ram, Shalom, thanks so much. Thank you, Mikey. I, I couldn't think of a better note to conclude this talk on. Thank you for being a beneficial presence on this planet and honoring your Dharma with courage and helping to bring people together during times of discord and disharmony. You're bringing love and connectedness and spreading the, the music of loving awareness. Thank you, brother. You are a true, a true ally on the path to us all. Ram Ram, thank you for being here.